I've turned RuneScape into a roguelike, and I'm locking myself into RuneScape's regions randomly for 24 hours at a time. In those 24 hours, I progress my account, bank, skills, and quests as far as possible, and then I take on the hardest PVM content in that area. If I fail the PVM challenge, I wipe my entire account, dropping everything I have ever accumulated. But if I succeed, I permanently unlock the ability to save one item if I wipe in the future. What's the goal? If I manage to successfully complete all 10 regions in a row, I'll immediately gear up and challenge Zook the hardest PVM content in the game. If I win, the series is over, but if I fail, I wipe and start all over again. Can it be done? Let's find out. What is up all you beautiful people and welcome to another episode of the Roguelike RS8 Adventure. And before we get started, I have a question for you all. Some of you have asked to see the region that we roll at the end of each episode, but if you guys would like to keep it that the way it is to where it's just one fluid episode, Please let me know down in the comments if enough people want it at the end of episode. I will go ahead and do that instead. But without further ado, let's get into this beautiful content. I'm going to hit you all with that recap. And if you end up enjoying today's episode, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe button, and turn on that bell notification icon on. So last episode, we spent 24 hours in Asgarnia. We trailblazed through several quests, did loads of pest control, and ended up fighting Mole. I gave myself 45 minutes to try and complete that boss fight. And about 8 minutes in, I got griefed. Which means I had to world hop until I found a free world. And it only gave us about 35 minutes to complete the region. I thought this was going to be enough time. But unfortunately, Mole ended up surviving with 10 health left. When we ran out of time. With us failing that last region, we roll on to a new one. Let's see what region we rolled. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. And I know in this video, or last video, actually, I asked if Valmore should be a region. It's actually not like on the <laughs> chunk yet. Uh, but I want to wait to see that question before we go ahead and pick a new area. So let's go ahead and let's pick our new region. I have no eyes. I really, I'm still a little bit upset that we failed the last one. So if there was a region I would have wanted to pick, it would have been this one. Oh, that is so nice. I've, that's crazy. We almost got Lumbridge or Falador. Actually, maybe Lumbridge because I feel very good about completing that one. I don't even know what our boss is going to be here, to be honest. So let's go ahead and go over here. Good old Candor. And there is a lot, a lot, a lot to do here. Every time this region is in leagues, I pick it. I mean, there's just so much to do here. So I'm very excited. Just like at a quick glance. We have Corsair Cove, probably won't be using that. Uh, Castle Wars definitely won't be using that. A lot of really good quests here. But is there a place I can actually buy runes to safe spot? Probably not, so I'll have to use range in order to safe spot a lot of stuff, which is completely fine. Yeah. And we get to start... We get to start the quest line for the Elven Lands. Absolutely beautiful. That's actually massive. I can't wait to get in here and oh I get to train agility to 20 oh that's gonna be so nice okay I'm gonna run down everything that I can do in here in the next clip but I'm very very excited for this one all righty we are here in candor and so there's a lot to go over a lot of prep work to do here this is a great area for numerous numerous reasons i'm gonna start by just thieving us some food but i want to go over the amount of quests that we actually have access to there's a lot so as far as quests that we can actually complete we have waterfall elemental workshop one and two murder mystery fishing contest sheep herder temple of ikov although i do need a u bow or higher Plague City, Eagle's Peak that requires 27 Hunter, Ezeal's Cult, Clock Tower, Monk's Friend, Tower of Life, Fight Arena, Trino Village, Watchtower, which requires 13 Herblore and 25 Agility, 
Big Choppy Bird Hunter, Observatory, and the Sea Slug Quest. As far as quests that I can start, we have the Grand Tree, Dwarf Cannon, Merlin's Crystal, Scorpion Catcher, maybe, because it does say that I need to complete the Bar Crawl, which I'm also going to start in this area. Making History, Biohazard, Cold War, and Hand in the Sand. And then quests that I can't start but are in this area are Monkey Madness, Monkey Madness 2, Swan Song, King's Ransom, Holy Grail, Legends Quest, Underground Pass, Regicide, Song of the Elves, Secrets of the North, Eyes of the Glow Free, Path of the Glow Free, and Silver Flesh Eaters. I have probably put in like three or four hours of research uh, into this because I really want to be hyper um, efficient with my time while I'm here because there is so much to do. So as far as things that I want to focus on, I want to focus on Hunter. It's readily available in this area. In construction, there is a plank spawn near Barbarian Outpost. And I need to obtain law runes in order to teleport into my house so that I don't accidentally teleport to a different area. But all of the training takes place in my house, so I would be fine either way. I want to focus on thieving. We have master farmers here, so I can get a lot of seeds and continuing that farming grind through master farmers. And we also have already knights, so that is going to be nice for some cash as well. Uh, we also can actually do rune crafting in this area. I can buy a bronze pick. I can use this guy to teleport me to a rune essence mine. I do have above 30 mining, so I will get pure essence. And I can actually use the Arania altar, which is nice. So after I complete elemental workshop one, I actually will be able to kill wind elementals. They're the lowest and they all drop around the same amount of runes. So that won't be too difficult. Uh, to stack up some air runes quickly so I can use the Arania bank. And then possibly fletching with being able to buy arrow tips, shafts, and feathers in this region. I really would like to get 65 so I can at least get a new short bow. And then of course possibly cooking and fishing. This is a great region for both of these skills. And maybe even up to 55 crafting with charters. Some important areas to note in this region. We have the ranging guild which is really nice. I'll actually be able to have some armor and won't have to struggle too long to actually get some decent combat stuff. Uh, we have the Arania Altar, like I talked about. Since I can't complete Tree Gnome Village, I will be able to unlock access to Spirit Trees, so that will be really nice. We have a Rune Essence Teleport, like I just talked about, the Bronze Pick, which is viable. There's also an Iron Axe, viable at the same shop. And we have the Fishing Guild, which requires 68 fishing, and we have the Magic Guild, which is eventually a magic shop in this region, once I hit 66 Magic. There's a lot to dive into. I'm going to gather some food. I'm going to gather some money. And then I'm going to figure out in which order I want to do these quests in. Hey, there we are completing Monk's friend. First quest of the region. I did go ahead, steal some cakes, stole some silk as well. That way I could sell it back later and get some cash. I'm going to continue doing some quests. Here we are completing one of the most notoriously broken quests. Sheep herder. And yes, it still is broken. Alrighty, just got done selling my silk, taking a look at the quests that I actually can possibly complete in this area and Elemental Workshop 1 and 2. I need to get the Hunter level to basically capture baby implings because I can't get thread anywhere in this area, not that I've seen on the wiki so far. Which is fine because I plan on trading Hunter anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and actually do the Clock Tower instead. And here we are completing the clock tower. Absolutely beautiful. I am going to go do Hazel's Cult next, I think. And there we are with Hazel's Cult completed. Almost 51 thieving. We are up to 814 total level. We've gotten a good amount of quest points so far, so that is nice. About two hours into the region. And there we are with Murder Mystery completed. That will... Bump us up to 51 crafting. Very nice. I'm going to go ahead and do a fishing contest. Just got done buying a bunch of armor upgrades. Very nice. Coif, leather rams, studded armor. And I actually can make a maple short bow here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that instead of buying a willow short bow. And here we are done with a fishing contest. And now that I have some combat gear... I can start doing some of the beautiful experience quests like Fight Arena. And here we are completing the Fight Arena quest. We will definitely be getting an attack level. We are all the way up to 50 quest points. Absolutely beautiful. We did get two attack levels. 
Very nice. And we got a thieving level as well. I am now going to go do the tree gnome village quest. All right. So I was also looking at plague city and I also need to get snake grass from either a young impling, which is 22 hunter or an eclectic impling, which is 50 hunter. So I really want to get that quest done so I can start the other one. So it looks like we're really going to be focusing on Hunter. Also, there's no saw in this region, so I can't really train construction either since I'm only level one. I need a saw to build anything at the moment, which is unfortunate. <laughs> so it looks like we'll be doing a lot of Hunter after I get done with the quest that I can do. While we are walking through here, I want to go ahead and go over what areas are actually included in Kandarin. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have Piscatoris, Barbarian Outpost, Sears Village, Camelot, Catherby, Ardi, Point Kazard, Yanil, Corsair Cove, Avatol, the Myths Guild, Gultanoth, Tree Gnome Village, and Tree Gnome Stronghold. As far as bosses, we actually can't do either of the two because they require a very, very high Slayer level. We're going to go over what that means for this region later once we get close to finishing, but for now I just wanted to make you all aware that we can't actually do any bosses in this region at the moment. Absolutely amazing. This is an amazing quest for an Iron Man to complete. We got 11,000 attack experience. That is going to be enough for 46, almost 47 attack, all the way up to 819 total and 52 quest points. Love to see it. We also get a gnome amulet, which I did not have before. All right, let's go ahead and actually start training some skills. I do have some other quests I need to complete. Waterfall, once I get the runes. Elemental Workshop, once I get the thread, one and two. Um, Temple Wyckoff, I don't think we're actually gonna get done. Hopefully I can get the Snape Grass for Plague City. Eagle's Peak, once we get 27 Hunter. Tower of Life, I can't do because I can't train construction, so we're going to take that off there. Uh, Watchtower, maybe 14 Herbal or 25 Agility, but Big Chompy Bird Hunting, Observatory Quest, and the Sea Slug. I'm going to at least get to 20 Agility here. That way, if I roll Desert, I can still train Agility over there. That way, there will be a couple different regions I can actually train it, so I'm going to go ahead and get to at least 20. And there we are with 20 agility. You know, this actually isn't too bad. I think it's about like 80-ish laps per hour. I'm only about like 30 minutes through, so I probably will come back here towards the end of the region. Maybe if I think I can get Watchtower Quest done um, and get 25 agility. But for now, that is going to be good enough for us. I am going to spend some of my cash on some Hunter Supplies, and I'm going to start that up. Actually, before I want to train Hunter, I want to get this 30 fire making so I can go ahead and do a sea slug. Because I forgot that I also needed 30 fire making for that quest. So we're going to finish this up. And here we are completing the sea slug quest. Good amount of fishing experience. That bumps us all the way up to 44. It has been a day of many quests. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. There's observatory quest down. 2,250 crafting experience, and looks like we got some strength experience as a reward as well. Plus an uncut sapphire. I did get a random event that got us the loot half key. Alrighty, after spending an hour mining pure essence with a bronze pick, I have 500, and I think that's going to be what I'm going to do for now. It is going to be a very long walk to the Arania Altar. And if I can't get enough runes to bank there, I gotta come all the way down here. Coming through here, come over here, <laughs> teleport, bank, and then go back. This is gonna take a while. And after I did some rune crafting, I finally was able to get six airs, waters, and earth runes so that we could complete waterfall quest. Very nice. We're gonna get some nice experience for this. That is 50 strength, 48 attack. 58 combat, we are all the way up to 852 total level. So some downside for my runecrafting method, since I haven't done uh, the Stronghold quest, the Grand Tree, this Spirit Tree actually is inactive. I can teleport to it, 
but I can't use it to actually teleport back. So this is going to be a lot longer than what I initially thought. Oh well. <laughs> I can't do anything about it because I can't complete that quest at the moment. Alright, the slow part of Hunter is officially over now that I am at 15. I can catch these beautiful ruby harvests. Oh my gosh, and it speeds up so much faster. Thank goodness for that because we're going to need a high Hunter level to get this stuff done in this region the first time that I want to get done. Didn't take long to get 20 Hunter. Absolutely beautiful. And there we are with a 25 Hunter. Now that I'm thinking about it, I actually don't think I'm going to be able to complete the Eagle's Peak quest. If I remember correctly, I actually have to go to Varrock to make the suit that makes me look like an Eagle. So I think that's just going to be a quest we're going to have to start, which is unfortunate because that quest does lock box traps so if i can't complete it i'm not gonna be able to use box traps for a while not that we're anywhere near the hunter level for it anyway but it is gonna be unfortunate and there we are with 30 hunter absolutely beautiful Alrighty, so there actually is something that we can do here so i'm very excited for that i have the hunter level uh i would like to get to 35 I'm pretty sure we will get that catching implings. If not, I will go back and finish it later. But I can access Puro Puro. You don't have to complete Lost City in order to do this as long as you enter through a crop circle, which they can be accessed, I'm pretty sure, in almost every region. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to come over here to Yanil. I am going to be world hopping until I find the crop circle. We're going to head on in there. I need thread and I need snake grass. Anything else that we get that's useful through the account is going to be a surplus. So I'm going to head off over and I'm going to do that. The snake grass is 1 in 100 from the baby implings. Uh, the young implings drop thread. That's a 1 out of 10 chance. We need the thread for elemental workshop and we need the snake grass for biohazard. Or is it Plague City? One of those two. We need it for one of them. Hey, I got the snake grass. Love to see it. Also got a beginner clue. Don't think that I'll actually be able to do that, but let's go ahead and just look at it. Nope, I cannot. Okay, so we got the hard item so I can untag these young implings. I really wanted to just go after that one first. Oh, I'm so glad. We've also gotten three lockpicks, which is super, super nice. So now we just need to get some thread and I will be good to go. Hey, I got it on the next one, but I am going to try and get some more. It is one out of ten. I don't really know how much I'm gonna need, so I would like to get at least like two or three. All right, I've got my two thread. I think I'm good to go. I'll just keep catching these until I fail one. And uh, well, we got a needle. I know that I needed one of those, but it says you get it during the quest, so to get it now is like pretty nice. And here we are completing Elemental Workshop. Part 1. Absolutely beautiful. Crucial for a lot of Iron Man accounts. A lot of good smithing and crafting experience. I totally forgot in order to start Elemental Workshop Part 2, you have to go over at the exam center to excite. It's kind of wild. Uh, so we will not be doing that, which means I have only a few more quests left to do slash start. Alright, so before I head over into Plague City, I'm going to collect about 300 air runes. That should be enough for me to bank over at the Arania Altar and be good to go. <laughs> because any, any other way that I bank is just incredibly, incredibly slow. And I am not looking to waste any more time. I mean, we're going to be over nine hours in and I still have not even worked my way through quests that I can start but can't complete yet. So I underestimated how long it would take us to do all the quests in this region for sure. Alrighty, I fished up some lobsters, cooked them. We've got about 40 in the bank. I have what I think will be enough air runes if we continue to make a decent amount while we are in runecrafting. I am hoping I can get to level 20. <laughs> with what I have but I'm unsure so I guess we will find out well I still have two more inventories left to go but there we are with 20 rune crafting absolutely love to see that and I am barely gonna have enough air runes to complete this so that was nice did not spend any more time there than what I needed to and there we are that is a plague city completed absolutely beautiful I got all the quests that I wanted 
to get done in this region. I still have Big Chompy Bird Hunter left to do. Uh, outside of that, I think that's all the quests that we can actually complete. Okay, we are finally at the point in Biohazard where we're going to be keeping these bad boys in the bank because these are quest items. We cannot go over to Remington because that is not in our region at the moment. So these are getting stuck in the bank and I'm going to be working on more quests. This is kind of crazy. I've uh, been waiting for over 10 minutes for this Chompy to spawn so I can complete this quest. Jagex, can we just like make it force spawn? I mean, come on now. <laughs> it's a quest. All right, finally done. Wow, that, uh, I feel like for the quest it should just spawn, you sh shouldn't really have to wait, but, oh well. That is probably the last quest I'll actually be doing in this area. Like I said, I can do Temple of Ikov, although I need a U-Bow. Eagle's Peak, I can start, which I actually need to do, uh, and then Watchtower, maybe, if I get 13, 14 Herb Lore and 25 Agility. Alrighty, Hand of the Sand is all caught up in this region. I am probably going to go do Dwarf, Cannon, or Cold War. I'm going to start those. And just like that, we are done all the steps that I can do with Merlin's Crystal. Alrighty, we are now done all the parts of the Dwarf Cannon. <laughs> There's literally just one step left and I have to go over to Dwarven Mines, but that is fine. I am going to be working on the Far Crawl and Gnome Stronghold next. And all the steps for Eagle's Peak are done. I've got one, maybe two left that I'm actually going to work on in this region. And then it's going to be skilling time. I can't believe that we've actually spent 12 hours basically just doing quests. That's kind of wild. Okay, this might be the last quest. I'm going to see if I can do a Scorpion Catcher or at least start it. Making history, I need 10 oak planks, and I realistically don't think that I'm going to get 250 hunter in this region. It's not really what I want to focus on. I just want to get to 35, so for now, I think we're done. I might do Watchtower. I'm unsure. I'm going to have to look at it, but I'm feeling very good about the quests that we have started and completed so far. Oh, I really thought for whatever reason this shop had all the fishing supplies. It doesn't have feathers. So there goes my plan with training fletching with arrows. So I am going to work on fletching in this region, but at the moment I'm just going to get some food. I do want to get all the way up to 55 thieving. That way when we eventually come back to this region, I can immediately start stealing from RD knights. And getting a steel axe in this region isn't going to be too difficult. So I already have the coal, just need to get the iron to make it. And then uh, I'm going to start some fletching and woodcutting training while also finally starting some farming. And there we are with 48 fishing. We can now fish leaping trout. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have probably went my entire life of playing RuneScape, thinking the barbarian fishing had to use feathers, but it can use bait. So I've already went ahead and bought 3,000. I don't know what agility level that'll get us, but it should be... I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll get a good amount. And this level is a pretty big milestone for the count. That is 50 fishing in 900 total level. We are all the way up to 23 agility. This bait will definitely be enough to get us all the way up past 25 agility which is realistically what i wanted we fish about 450 of these an hour so it's pretty good um so i'm not going to use up all my time like finishing up the rest of this which is nice so i have plenty of time to go back and get the 35 hunter that i want and then after that i'm unsure what i'm going to do maybe mine some more pure essence uh i am not entirely sure and this last fish here that is 55 fishing absolutely beautiful we are one level away from 30 agility and i am just going to use the rest of this fishing bait i don't know maybe 57 fishing is what we'll end up getting which will be super nice and there we are with 30 agility absolutely beautiful we can now do the varrock course love that we can also do the agility pyramid although that is not <laughs> gonna be good at level 30 Really don't want to do that until low 60s at the minimum. So 
yeah, definitely won't be doing that if we were all deserts, but we can train on the rooftop there. There we are with 58 fishing, and if I remember correctly, that unlocks the leaping salmon for us from Barbarian Fishing. We have 171 bait left, and after I'm done this, you guys thought that I wasn't going to get a rune scimitar from Zamrak Warriors. You are wrong. I am going to go over to the Ranging Guild to buy some more bronze arrows. We're going to AFK that, and then we're going to finish off this region with Hunter before we roll the next one. It is time to start the rune scimitar grind. I think we're a little bit further than this, um, but we're about 21 hours in, so I'm going to see how long it actually takes us to get this item. Oh, you absolutely love to see it. That only took us five minutes. That's actually insane. How many kills did that actually take us? Five. It took us five kills. I'm going to go ahead and get back to Hunter, and then I'm going to see what level we can get. Alrighty. So, I just hit 35 Hunter. Very nice. I'm going to continue to do Hunter in this region until... We roll for the next one, but it's time to talk about the bosses for the Kandoran region. Now, the Kandoran region is a very unique region in the fact that both bosses have a Slayer level, and both bosses actually require you to be on a Slayer task in order to fight them, outside of the one time that you fight Thermi for the Diary. So, we'll get one pass there, and then after that... We'll have to be on a Slayer task to actually fight them. So, the only reasonable solution that I've come up with, and in order to continue to actually progress the series and the account, is that when we roll Kandarin, we won't fail it. But we also won't unlock an item slot if we don't defeat one of those two bosses. This stops us from basically failing until we hit 87 Slayer for Kraken, and then hoping we can somehow get it as a Slayer task, and also roll this region when we have it as a Slayer task. It's a very simple fix, it's a very simple solution, I already kinda knew this was gonna be my idea going in, but we hadn't rolled it yet, and I just wanted to talk about it once we got here so that it made a little bit more sense. The other potential option was just rolling from the highest list of actual killable NPCs, but that felt very cheap. I mean, the hardest thing would maybe be the Mithril Dragon, and I think at a point we're just going to steamroll it, so it, it doesn't seem very fun to watch that as the boss for the area until I get 87 Slayer and continually unlock permanent item slots. So, we'll be completing the region. It won't be rollable uh, until we reset again from dying or failing, but we also won't be unlocking an item slot whenever we complete this region. We are back here fishing for the last hour-ish of the region. I did end up getting 40 Hunter, which was super nice. That was higher than what I was hoping to get in this region. And there we are with 35 Agility. We can now do the Barbarian Agility Arena course once I actually complete the bar crawl. We may get to 60 fishing, but we only have 27 minutes left, so I'm a little unsure if we'll actually get there. Alright, so we are going to hit 60 fishing. That's going to be absolutely beautiful, but let's go ahead and recap just exactly what we've accomplished in this region. So when we started, we had 813 total level. And we will be leaving with 935. So we've gained 122 levels in this region. When we also entered this region, there we are with 60 fishing. Absolutely beautiful. When we entered this region, we had 1,557,500 experience. And we are leaving with 2,043,700. That is a net gain of 485,500 experience. And let's go ahead and look at the quest stuff that we got going on here. So when we entered, we had completed 18 of 164 quests. Now we have 32 of 164 completed. And we only had 37 quest points when we entered, but now we have 60. And we have a load of quests started. I've got them all organized and categorized so that next time I go into a region, I can see 
exactly what quests I can potentially do in those regions so that I don't accidentally miss anything anymore. I think I've missed like one or two things in the past because I just wasn't thinking about it, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. We've accomplished a lot in this region considering the first 12 hours I spent doing quests. I did not realize we were going to be doing quests that entire time. That is kind of wild. <laughs> I was not expecting that. And that is going to wrap it up once we're done with this bait. I know we have 10 minutes left, but I think I'm just going to maybe thieve a little bit for some extra cash. And we're going to be rolling on to the next region. I'm officially out of bait. We're obviously not going to be dropping anything since we didn't fail. But we also can't really gain an item from completing this region since we didn't actually kill a boss. That also means that we won't be able to roll this region until we fail again, which is completely fine. I'm going to see all you guys in the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. And I just want to give a special shout out to my channel members, Tom, Father Duo, and Liz Lemon. Thank you, by the way, for letting me know how to say your name properly. I honestly had no idea. And I knew that I probably butchered it. And for the rest of you, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you guys next upload.